Hey, it's been a long time since I made any video for you guys. I've been busy with school, I've been busy with work, and basically life just caught up with me for the past few weeks. And uh, it's been overwhelming. Uh, it's been very tiring for me to have so many work on hand that I have to do. I'm not like a full-time content creator, YouTuber, or streamer kind of thing. Those are things that I do at the best of my timings as much as I can. However, though, I managed to free up some of my responsibilities. Certain tasks of mine have been cleared off already. So I have more free time now, and I'm back to producing good videos for you guys. So that's the happy news for you all. Let's get started on what I'm going to do in today's video. Or if not, let's talk about what I'm going to do in the subsequent videos that you guys will see for the entire of this week. This video is the first of a three-parter series whereby we're going to be taking this entire week to talk about the limited operators in Arc Knights. A lot of you have been talking to me about you know, how do I feel about the fact that Neural Alter has been released? What do I think about the state of the game now? Um, where is Arc Knights trying to go to and all that kind of things. So. This is kind of a discussion that I didn't mind getting started on, but when I was writing up the outline of the video and what I want to talk about, I came to realize that, holy damn, there's actually so much that I need to cover uh, for people, such that originally I just wanted to do one big video and then let people watch the whole thing at once. But then realizing that there's so much to talk about, I had to split the one video into three parts. Uh, if I did it all in one video, it's probably going to be more than one hour long to watch and then it becomes a whole mega documentary, which as I can see from a previously one hour uploaded video, definitely your attention span in order to catch on the video is going to drop over time, which is why I split it up into these nice three little parters for you to be able to easily digest what we're going to talk about. So let me guide you through this series that I'm making. The first video is going to talk about Arc Knights Global needing to grow as a community. This video is going to be addressing the state of Arc Knights Global compared to the state of Arknights CN. We're going to look at the two servers side by side and see how Arknights is progressing as a game, addressing some of the perceptions that some of you have to see whether some of your perceptions towards the games are actually true or if not, is there something else going on behind. That's for the first video. The second video is talking about why does Arknights do limited banners? This is a thing that a lot of you have been curious about. You're wondering why is there so many limited banners going on? And we're going to do a bit of a statistical or full-on data analysis kind of video where I'm going to show you guys the revenue rankings of all the banners in Arc Knights. We're going to look from the first banner that ever started in Arc Knights all the way up to Skadi the Corrupting Heart for Arc Knights CN. We'll see who made the most sales in that server and who made the least sales and then draw some conclusions as to what is going on with the earnings of Arc Knights from banner to banner. So it's gonna be a very interesting video and a very fun one. I'm pretty certain it is a must watch for many of you. So there's that for the second one. And the final one is gonna be talking about the nightmare of limited banners. Well, that's the title of the video at least. In the third and final video, that one will be covering things like what are limited banners, some basic information, what is the future of limited banners, how limited banners affect different parties of people, such as the free to play, the people who are paying for the game and the people who are basically paying the biggest amount in the game. Like how does this affect each of you? And then talking about players reception towards different limited banners of the game like Chen Outer and No Outer and finally talking about how limited banners can be improved in the game. So basically this three parter starts from like a whole big company perspective. Like this first video is talking about what is going on on Hypergrid sites and Yostar site and then the second one is talking about the, the decisions that they make. Why are they doing the things in the game? And then the last one comes down to how does this affect us players? Are we actually happy with the state of the game? or are there changes that we're looking for in the game. So all in all, these three videos are going to be very fun for you guys to watch. I think that's enough introduction for this series. Let's get on to the real deal. So as I mentioned, this video is going to talk about the state of Arc Knights Global and CN. What I'm going to do in this video is to address some of the kind of thoughts that I see people putting forth when doing a comparison between the global server and the CN one. There are apparently quite a few people who feels that apparently Arc Knights is treating the CN server extremely well and that the global server is like, it's like how one is the favorite child and then the other one is just like sitting one side over there. I kind of get where those views are coming from. Let's investigate whether it's true that global isn't like as appreciated as the Chinese server or are they actually taking effort to make global a nice place to be. Let me put in a crumb of something that I will be introducing in the next video. As I mentioned in the next video, I'm going to be doing a ranking of all the banners that happen in Arc Knights and then ranking them by the revenue that is earned in each of them. But in order to ignite this discussion, let me just raise one particular banner to get this going. The lowest grossing banner in Arc Knights CN ever, or if not the one that earned the least amount of sales, 
Could you play a guess of who that is? Well, I'm gonna leave it to you. Let me do like a little drum roll, like three, two, one. All right. The lowest earnings was actually for Mountains Manor in Arknight Cien. I know to some of you fellow furry lovers, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, how did he end up being the lowest amount? I can't really answer it myself. We'll look into that in the next video. But yes, apparently by statistics, Mountain has the lowest earnings ever in Arknight Cien with a total earning of 65 million yuan. Yuan being the Chinese currency. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, so Chinese currency, I get that. What is it in USD? Something that I can compare to. If you convert 65 million yuan to USD, the amount that they earn was 10 million USD. 10 million. I'm not kidding. For a single banner, they earn that huge amount. How in the world are they able to clock that huge number just for a banner alone? And yet, I'm saying that this is the lowest earning of a banner. That would mean that every single banner that occurred in Arknights, they have been earning at least 10 million USD, at least in the CN server. Before we talk about how this number comes about, I do need you guys to understand some money sense over here. Revenue is not the same as profit. Revenue is the amount of money that a company gets when they make sales of a product with someone else. So for instance, if let's say you're a lemonade stand owner, all right, you sell lemonade to people, and then afterwards you have a customer that comes in, they buy a lemonade and you get the money from them. But you have to understand that that money that you get is called revenue. Whereas profit is not the same as revenue because profit is what you get after you subtract cost from the revenue. When you make a business, there's a lot of cost that's being involved. If we go back to the lemonade stand, you probably have to pay money for things like the ingredients. You need to pay money for the raw lemon before you actually make it to lemon juice. You have to pay money for the equipment, the juicer that you use in order to make the lemonade. You have to pay money for the rental of the store that you own. And if you have staff, you have to pay your staff money. You have to pay your suppliers money. You have to put money on a lot of places in order to make something work. It's not very simple to run a business. And it's the same idea when we go back down to Hypergriff, whereby they also need to earn money. And on Hypergriff's side, the amount of money that they need to put in is way more. Things like paying for the servers, the internet servers that allows the game to run, paying their own staff, which includes things like their artists, animators, their programmers, level designers, all kinds of people. There's so many people they have to pay, so much equipment, they got to pay for their own office rentals, and if they collaborate with other companies, for instance, they also need to make all these kind of payments. So there's a lot of cost involved. Even though the amount of revenue that they're earning is at least 10 million USD each banner, but we don't really know how much of the money that they need to spend on actually the necessities of the company. So maybe their actual profits could be 2 million, 3 million. Maybe they have to spend 7 million on the amount of projects that they're taking. So do understand that even when you're seeing these numbers, it's not fair of you to quickly judge that, oh my goodness, a company is earning so much money. Then why aren't they taking care of us players? You gotta understand that companies have to spend money on important needs as well. And it's with the money that they earn that they're able to use it to bring about bigger projects, new mechanics, new game modes, new characters, all kinds of features that players love to see. With more money, you can do greater things. So now that you guys understood revenue, costs, and profits, all right, we go into the understanding of how in the world are they able to make this much money. Now, if you've never known about the size of the player base in CN, now is the best time for you to make a guess. How many players do you think are playing Arknights Global? And how many players do you think are playing Arknights CN? Let's first start with Arknights Global. We look into things like the social media. We look at Twitter, we look at Facebook, and we look at YouTube. There's a bit of this usual number that there's like 150,000 people who's following each of these social medias. 150,000 isn't going to be the exact number of players as well because there are some people who choose not to subscribe or choose not to follow these social media. So let's give it a nice estimate. There could be about 200,000, maybe if not 300,000 players in Arknights Global right now. Now let's look at Arknights CN. Have you already made your guess as to how many players are playing? Maybe you guess something like 500,000, maybe you guess a million. How much more can it get? Now if we look at the number of people who are watching the Arknights CN livestream in the recent two and a half anniversary for Arknights CN, where there's the null outer being featured and all, that stream had 7 million people watching it. 7 million. Think about that number, that is huge. And if I recall back in the Chen Outer banner, I might not have an image available to show the number of people watching it, but I remember that that one peaked at up to 10 million people watching that live stream at once. And that is crazy. 
the amount of players might actually be more than the number of people who actually watch those live streams. And even if we just lower it down, that there's 10 million players playing, compare that to Arctis Global, we're a peanut. We're so much tinier than the Arctis CN community. And if you think about game revenue, if every single of the 10 million players in Arknights actually bought a monthly card, in CN, the amount that they will get is easily 50 million USD. And that is huge of an amount if you think about it. Definitely, this is crazy earnings for a company. So when we address the size of the player base when we look at CN and Global, some people think that CN is treated somewhat better because that's like where the game started. Or it's for a geographical reason that the game is actually more catered in one server. It's not really that. The thing is that Arknight CN has a huge player base. And it's because of that that of course Arknight CN gets much more care, much more catering towards them. You cannot really fault the company of this. It is most logical that if let's say you are the boss of a company, you will focus on where the bulk of your customers are at. So if it is really true that Arknight CN gets better treatment, then the reasoning is there. That's just where most of the players are located at, in the Arctic CN server. I'm gonna bring in Genshin into the discussion over here, where if we look at how Genshin first started, right? Genshin is a game made by the company of Mihoyo, which is also located in China. And at that point in time when the game first launched, I think a lot of Genshin players don't really recall this. But when the game first started, a lot of the content that is being dispatched and even the trailer videos and whatnot, they were all in. Chinese at first, because that's where the game first started. At that point in time, Mihoyo probably thought that, okay, the game can definitely be very popular worldwide, but they weren't very sure whether the global market would end up becoming bigger than the Chinese market. And there is the assumption that the Chinese market will be much bigger, since that's where the game is being made in the first place. So at that point in time, when the game was releasing info everywhere, the game was originally just Chinese based. But by the time Genshin hit about version 1.2 or 1.3, that's when things started to change the Genshin official channel started to release English trailers and a lot of the announcements and everything is all English voice acted. Which goes to show that there is this big possibility where the amount of Genshin players in their global servers actually became about the same as the CN one or if not, it actually became larger than the CN one. It doesn't mean that one server having more players than another means companies start taking that as like, oh, that's where they're gonna focus in and then they neglect something else. That's not it. It's a matter of spreading the effort all around. In fact, I think Genshin has grew so big that they give enough love to all of their servers, whether it's the Korean server, Japanese server, the CN one, or the English one. The good part about Genshin is that everyone receives the update at the same time. They don't have like a timeline dislodge like us in Arknights where we have Chinese server and global server experiencing events at a different time. But for them, they're fortunate enough that everything started at the same time, so there is no disparity. And when it comes to the event rewards and what they give to the players, they put in this nice spread effort to ensure that everyone gets as equal of content, to ensure that everyone gets as equal of the rewards as possible. That is the benefit when the community is grown so large enough that it tells the company, hey, we should pay attention in this. Most of our customers are over here. And that is something that I dream that Arctites can also achieve somehow in the future. It's quite far-fetched. We're only at 200,000 players. And how are we supposed to hit even like a million players? Don't even talk about 10 million. To even have a million players? That is amazing already. So before I even cover on the points of how Arknight's server is supposed to grow, let me address the part of, are we actually getting good enough treatment from our publisher of the game, which is Yostar? Or are we actually getting like shafted as a global server? I understand the idea of being shafted in the form of like people saying that we're missing updates here and there, like how we didn't get the Halloween skin rerun. Till now, we do not know where the grey login skin is, but I'm still very certain that we will get it by the end of this year. We get a delay in the events posting to the point that we always have this 6 months gap with CN, and there's a lot of things that make Global seem like we're not the better server. But I beg to differ on it, I don't think Global is exactly in a bad spot. For one, when we have this split in the events, we need to understand that we're kind of granted the power of clairvoyance, or basically the ability to see a future banner. I know, some of you don't like it. Some of you wish that you experienced the exact same thing as another server, so that we can be all hyped together. We can join in all the fun, we don't have to feel like there's a wait, there's a delay in getting something that we want. But then there are also the party of people who say that, no, I actually like clairvoyance. I like to plan. I can see what the future holds, and then with that I can plan my pools, see what I want to do in the game, and it's all very nice. However that it is, whether we like it or we don't like it, 
the thing that we must understand here that there is an inevitability that the timeline is split between us and CN, it's going to be very hard for us to join with them right now. Some of you feel that Arctis Global is rushing to chase CN. I don't think we are. We're not chasing anymore. If you haven't realized we've been maintaining a very good six months gap, every event from here on and it's very difficult to close in the gap from six months to zero months because in order for us to achieve that Arctis CN needs to go on a six months break in order to actually let us catch up with them and then afterwards we can be in pace but the thing is CN is rushing forward like a bullet train they're releasing new content every now and then to the point that between events they only get about a one week break if not, maybe even less than one week or just slightly over a week. So we can't really catch up with that. Even if we do things like, oh, have no breaks between events, just do all the events all squished together, it's still not gonna happen. If let's say CN keeps up with this pace, it's probably gonna take like three years for Global to catch up, even if there's no breaks between events. And we can tell in the recent times that Global isn't gonna do things like no breaks anymore. We're experiencing this awkward break now between Kazimir CC and Undertides. So yes, there will be a split in the timeline of the two servers, but for more players, this seems like a better thing than a negative thing. So I will put that as a positive point towards Arctis Global as a state of the server. Then on the other hand, even though we definitely will have less revenue than Arknight CN, because 10 million people paying money for a game is crazy. Compared to us 200,000, we're feeding something, but it's not a lot if you think about it. Despite us probably having less earnings for the company, but we can tell that Yostar is at least working hard to do a good job for the global server itself. We do have wonderful exclusive benefits that's being raised around, such as how we're receiving exclusive global songs that is first released in global before it goes into CN. Like the recent Never Give Up, and I think there's another like one or two more songs that was a little bit of a global exclusive. Um, we also receive things like giveaways or contests that is being held, which I'm wondering to myself if CC5 is going to get a video contest again. Um, there's things like the hate hunting program where they want to support content creators even better, which is a program that I didn't join. Maybe someday I have to make a video about why that I didn't join, but yes, I didn't join if you're curious about it. But still, I can't deny that the company is taking good action to, you know, do improvements in the game and still cater to the global audience. We can tell that they're trying to make global a bigger and better place. And it's with that idea that I wouldn't say that global is being mistreated. Of course, it seems like the focus is a little bit smaller on the global side, but they are doing their due diligence to still make it a wonderful and nice place for us. And I mean, to most of you over here, we are kind of living comfortably in this world of Terra and Arknights as players of the game. So yes, the treatment, honestly, I think it's not that bad. It has generally been okay in the server. But that doesn't mean to say to not push for a change. We do hope that we can be even more taken care of in the future. Now, with everything that I've mentioned, there's two conclusive points that I want to make. The first conclusive point is the survivability of Arknights. Now that you learn that the game is actually so popular within the CN server, and the fact that they do have a lot of earnings to sustain themselves as a company, well, we can be pretty much certain that the game is going to survive for a long time, at least for six months, a year, maybe even two years. And I mean, there's other things that even tells us that the game is here to stay. The fact that there's an animation going on, it tells us that the money that they're earning is at least finally being put into good places. Things like integrated strategies being added about 8 to 9 months from now in Arctis Global, being a permanent mode that is going to be changing seasons each time, that is also a big plus. It tells us that we supported the game wholly and they're putting the revenue to good use to bring us wonderful new game content for us to play. And I mean Arctis is still managing to do more collaborations with people, they're working very hard to bring about even bigger changes, quality of life stuff to all of us. So definitely, I'm quite certain that the game has a good strong roadmap ahead of us. So long as, of course, nothing too majorly bad happens, which I hope that Hypergriff learned from previous lessons to not commit like the same mistakes over and over again. But I have strong belief that they're doing very well now. So to those of you who are worried that, oh, will Arknights be in trouble and whatnot? Nah, I think our game is as powerful as Genshin to still stay alive and possibly have a 10 year roadmap. But of course the player base in Arknights is not of the same size as the player base in Genshin. The second pointer that I want to make is that while the game is going to survive, but the game needs to grow. The game needs to get even bigger than what it is right now. And when we look at specifically for Arknights Global, it's kind of odd when we think of Global as all the countries all over the world, and we're having way less players than not just the CN server. We also have less players probably compared to the JP server or the Japan server. It's just odd to think about it. And I do dream and hope that one day we can reach this impossible seeming goal of having like a million players in Arknights. I mean, 
things are having a good shift nowadays with the whole anniversary saga that occurred in Genshin I understand that some people from Genshin are starting to port over to Ark Knights because they find it as an interesting game and they're getting tired of the other games that they're playing which if you are someone who ported over from another game welcome to the game I hope that you're enjoying your stay in Ark Knights there is basically more people who's finally picking up on this game but then again, while there's traffic, it's hard to say whether the traffic is a very fast one or a very large growing one or not. So there are a bunch of ways for Arc Knights Global to grow even bigger. I gotta say that one of the biggest contributions to make a game actually succeed very well has to do with content creators. Content pe creators are basically people that you watch on the screen, like myself right now, whether it's through YouTube or Twitch. These people really help to make a game active to give people activity in the game and to make people feel excited about things that's happening. I don't see content creators as people who should be like massively fawn over and preached about like as if they're gods of the game or whatever. I don't see myself as a god. I'm just a regular human being who's making videos for my own joy and your own joy when I make it and when you watch it. But then again, it's undeniable that there is a huge influence that content creators play. And that's kind of why I urge a lot of people, whether it's an existing content creator or a new one, to spur the community. To get people to be more interested in the game, to love the game, and to see that, hey, Arknights community isn't that bad. It's such a nice wholesome place to be and I really want to be a part of this game community. I do see a lot of wonderful new faces that's popping up in the YouTube scene with people like Drills and um, Viper even doing his wonderful stuff, appealing to the casuals and even a wider audience better. So I appreciate that there are new faces to make Arknights community a very vibrant one. And if you've been wanting to become a content creator yourself, yeah, I encourage you to go ahead, get started. I don't see why not. Even if you're nervous, I mean, I think that's the same for everybody when they first start something, right? You won't know till you try, so that's what I encourage you to do. But yes, one part is content creators. That's what a lot of people can do. The, another thing that can be done is on a personal scale. Have you introduced this game to your friends? Have you introduced this game to people that you know? You wouldn't know if there's a good friend that's around you that might actually take a liking to this game. And by bringing in, roping in more people into the game, it can get the game community to grow even larger. Of course, this entire thing cannot be all player directed. The companies themselves also need to take action to make things even better. One of the ways is of course the uh, content creator program to incentivize people to build better content for the game. But on the other hand, they need to improve and up their game on advertisement. Advertisement is still a powerful device at the end of the day. And when it's done well, you can definitely get a lot of people to get interested in your product on your own game. So that's the thing that Yostar is definitely trying to do. I mean, they do have a bit of an indirect advertisement, whereby even though some of you are bothered by some of the old advertisements they did, but things like their music videos, those things are so well produced and professional. I think some people actually join the game because they listen to the music in Arc Knights and they're like, yeah, the game is good, or I like the character I'm seeing in this video, therefore I get roped into the game. They can just continue with this indirect marketing if they are not confident with direct marketing. But it still reinforces my point that marketing is important at the end of the day to get a game to grow even larger. I honestly do not know how the game will turn out in a year's time, but as someone who's making videos on YouTube and streaming the game for you guys on Twitch, I have my own personal goal to kind of help to spur the community to be an even greater and bigger one. I love the Arknights community a lot and it's a place that I grew up in in the past year. I've made wonderful friends all over the world just from my experience of being here and like I greatly thank you guys for all of that. It's with the amount of love that people give to me that it makes me want to be committed to stay here and do my best for the community so that the game can grow up to be an even bigger one. I have even more video ideas, even more projects that I wish to input into the game, but of course the only limiting factor is time. I'm very busy with other things that I do in life, but if time wasn't a disruptive factor, I would probably be greatly producing many wonderful things over here, because I myself have a personal motive to get this game to be well loved. Maybe it's not the best game I've ever played, but it is surely one of the bestest one I've played ever in my life. So this is basically just a little display of my own affection and commitment towards this game. That I care for it a lot and I wish to see it prosper and strive to be an even bigger one. With that, I think I've covered all that I want in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if not, please look forward to the next one where we shall be talking about why Arknights even do limited manners in the first place. Hope you guys have a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Oh. You stick to the end of the video. Thank you for watching the whole thing. But now I'm gonna end off the video with one little special part. This is to preamble the next part of the video. So remember in the middle portion of what you've just watched, uh, I showed you guys the little chart of all the banner revenues from the first banner of Arknights all the way up to Scuddy the Corrupting Heart. 
So we're gonna play a little game before the next video actually drops. Maybe about 2-3 days from now. We already know that the 25th banner is Mountain, with the lowest earnings within Arc Knights. Now within this chart itself, all of these bars are in the form of million USD. These are the 24 operators that you are supposed to slot in. So let's play this little game, on the condition that you do not know about the revenue that is being earned in all of these banners. I want you to go and slot all of the 24 operators according to the ranks and where do you think they stand in each of these bars. Once you have done that, give it a save, keep it for yourself. When the next video drops, let's see how much of your guesses will be correct. Alright, have fun guessing. Bye-bye.